Well, three days of voting in Russia's presidential elections kicked off Friday. Vladimir Putin is all but guaranteed to win his fifth term in office. The Kremlin spent the past month trying to squash any opposition, disqualifying a popular anti-war candidate, Boris Nadezhdin, and arresting outspoken supporters of the late opposition leader, Alexei Navalny. Before his death, Navalny called on his supporters to stage protests during the election. Reports of vandalism have come in from some polling sites. Maria Snegova joins me now. She's a senior fellow of the Europe, Russia, and Eurasia program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Welcome, Maria. Given that we already know what to expect in terms of election results in Russia, is there some sort of litmus test that you're looking for in terms of Putin's support? Absolutely. Uh, there's hardly any intrigue as to who's going to win. Uh, but certainly uh, there's a question as to how much Putin is going to get. And there's a great opportunity to, you know, to, you know, to make bad uh, wondering. Uh, but according, uh, apparently um, uh, the presidential administration earlier has, has set up the goal of 80 percent. Uh, if Putin's going to get 80 percent, he's going to... Uh, he's going to beat his own record, which was set up earlier, back in 2018, when he gets 76 and 69 percent. Uh, on top of all that, there's also electoral turnout, which allegedly is also set up to be um, at 80 percent. The goal is to demonstrate the societal unity around Putin, you know, this civilizational mission to uh, lead to lead Russia into war against uh, Ukraine and the West more broadly, and essentially to uh, defend its exceptionalism. So far, given all these uh, multiplying record reports of, for example, arsons and uh, uh, violations, uh, there is a lot of people who came to the electoral precinct trying to express their anger and attacked, uh, for example, uh, the ballots. So far, it doesn't seem like the Kremlin is extremely successful in achieving those goals. How, how able are people in Russia to express at the ballot box any sort of dissatisfaction with Putin? Well, of course, it's a very limited uh, situation. Russia really has collapsed into full-blown dictatorships. There are multiple people arrested on a daily basis. The number of repressions has tripled uh, over the last couple of years, since uh, particularly the start of uh, Russia's war in Ukraine. And even before that, one couldn't really uh, speak of elections serving a real manifestation of citizens' opinion. Uh, to the extent uh, that we can, using the polls that are also problematic, uh, survey uh, the public um, perception of the regime, certainly Putin is still popular. It wouldn't be correct to say that he's completely unpopular. Mm -hmm. But it's also clear that the regime is very reluctant to, for example, allow the anti-war candidates to participate in the election for a reason. Uh, we, for example, know that up to 20% of Russians, and uh, according to some polls, even up to 30%, really want the war to end. Mm. And therefore, uh, potentially, the Kremlin doesn't really want that sentiment uh, to be expressed. Having said that, uh, the liberal Russian opposition exile, now led uh, by Yulia Navalny after the death of her husband, called uh, for Russians to protest uh, during the mid day uh, to come to the electoral precinct, the so-called so actions, the midday against Putin. That's one of the things to watch in the next couple of days as to how many people yeah. will actually try to come. And Maria, really quickly, I understand that Russian-controlled regions in Ukraine are actually participating in this election. Are they expected to have any changes in the impact then? Uh, they will be used by the Kremlin to demonstrate this unity around uh, Putin's civilization and mission, uh, to showcase how, uh, quote unquote, happy those uh, people are about joining mm -hmm. Russia. And of course, already, as of now, we can talk of unprecedented level of violations in these regions in particular, because they are really closely controlled by the uh, Kremlin security forces, just as we have seen uh, during the so-called uh, referendums, the real fake ref referendums that the Kremlin mm -hmm. ran there back in 2020. All right. Maria Snegovaya, thank you. Thank you.